Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. we're here in the system of Morval Island and we're going to test out a T4 Dark Cerberus. This is dual web style. We've previously done quite a few tests on the T4 Dark Cerberus, like with dual webs, one web, Gistex type large shield booster, Pithex type large shield booster. I have not done a lot of testing on the Gistex type large shield booster with the dual webs. And the reason I'm focusing a lot on the dual webs is because I got a comment by some guy and I mentioned that he had done a lot of testing on uh, the Cerberus for T4 Darks and uh, he had a lot more success rate with the dual webs just because of the application helping in very dangerous waves. And I can see why that can be a thing because dual webs will allow you to use rage more and in effect not only increase the application but also just your raw DPS a lot since you're suddenly able to get that DPS bump from Kaldari Navy to Rage. Let's go and wreck these FE Alters here easily. We've got the Rage and we've got the, the, the Jewel Webs. They just die so quickly because so much DPS we got. We've got 890 DPS. No joke whatsoever. Okay, let's go here. Straight in. Open this up. Ooh, that's crazy filaments uh, or, or loot for a, uh, <laughs> a T4. Cataclysmic, and then you get that Mutoplasm at the same time. Really nice to see. Uh, let's get a bit closer here. And then we get a shield boost a tiny bit. That's good. And then we get here to these Lucid Escorts. And these waves can be a little bit tedious. The loose deep watches, they've got a lot of meat to get through. It should be alright. Dual web's just really nice. The key is to be able to get a decent amount of tank and dual web. It's quite difficult. But our fit is not crazy expensive, but it is still not the cheapest. See here, 840 million, but it's actually more like 780, 790 million because of the loot we've got in our ship right now. So we can orbit this guy at 500, something like that. That'll be good. Just orbit and shoot, orbit and shoot. Nothing really much more to it. It's pretty slow. Actually, not that slow. A little bit under five minutes, that's good. Reload here. Nice, next room. Okay, Charybdis, this guy is good to avoid. Let's see if we've got entanglers here. We want to destroy them first so we don't get caught. Because there's, there's a risk you can get caught and then Caribbean will suddenly be doing a ton of damage to you. Get those jewel webs on. All bit 500 here. And I think we can maybe deploy the drones without getting them destroyed. There's a deep water much express over there. I think it's okay if we have them go for Caribbean. Have them go over here. Or we should be shield boosting a little bit. Shield boost, shield boost. Taking a decent amount of damage from Caribbean actually. Let's orbit 500. And we have got Rage on, right? Yeah, that's Rage. Now we get those drones assisting us ever so slightly. So another battleship room. This is a good time test uh, wave here. Seeing what's the quickest completion time. Shouldn't be too bad since the application is not actually going to be that much of an issue. It's just mainly raw DPS we have to get through and then the cruisers as well. Cruisers can take quite a bit of time if you're not able to apply well. These FPLs I can sometimes have problems applying with them with rage but with dual webs it doesn't seem like it's such a big deal oh look at that drones getting attacked warp scrambled poor drone drone abuse here we'll go towards the binet of cash now because we have actually pretty good range the Cerberus is a very nice cruiser in some ways it's got good bonuses to shield boosting and then it's also got very good long range to its missiles so uh, even though heavy assault missiles are usually seen as close range weapons you can hit very far out with them that's good 
And then this one here. The main issue I have with this hybrid is I really dislike its slot layout. I would have liked to add an extra mid or extra low or just something extra. I always have a hard time making the perfect fit just due to the lack of slots or the lack of power grid, etc. Power grid actually have a bit of problems with. If I had more power grid, I could do a lot more with this fit. Because the thing with the here is because of the power grid, I have to have this diagnostic system. That could have been something else. Extra tank, for example. But the diagnostic system is also very nice because it provides uh, extra capacitor, which is quite necessary on this uh, fit here, just to get. It's nice to have some extra capacitor. Reload that here. And a ton of cruisers. Let's go to the bite after cash. Oof. Big sound effects here. One volley and that won't hit because we're getting uh, missile guys disrupted pretty hard. So we'll just go for these guys straight away. Perfect. And let's open this up. Nice. See what's in here. 1.9 million. You see you get like 40 million in one uh, can and then the other one you get 1.9 million. Very big differences you can find here. It's okay, that's just the way it is in the abyss. And we can keep a range if they get it 500. Good that we destroy these confusers as quick as possible because they'll make each wave or each NPC get destroyed a little, a little bit quicker than the previous one. Since they're reducing our, both our range but also application. That's the main important thing here. We want as much application as possible. Could be an idea when you have bad application, then you just give some boosters. I'm not getting any boosters right now, but crash boosters can help quite a bit. Synth crash is very nice because it doesn't give any side effects. There we go now, all confusers destroyed. Feels like it's already going quicker now that we destroyed all the confusers. The first one after all the confusers are destroyed. We'll recall those drones because they're getting attacked here. See, they're 40 kilometers away. That's the only reason they're doing that is because they're on our drones, nothing else. Otherwise, there's no reason they want to keep that big of a distance. Look at that. Well, the whole entire fleet is decided to engage our drones. <laughs> right, let's see if we can take out the spearfisher here. Okay, go for the Scylla. And wreck them. We're really effective at destroying these guys, the dual webs. It feels really smooth. And these waves we've encountered, they're pretty tough waves in terms of tide completion, like big cruiser waves, loose deep watcher waves, uh, Caribdis Tyrannus waves. So I'm quite impressed with the completion time of these dual webs. Just need to get the tank to be pretty good with the dual webs. I mean, in the dark side, you usually have an easy time tanking because you can maneuver yourself out of many situations. But to me, it feels still a bit sketchy only having one mid slot for the tank and then two rigs. I'd have liked to have at least one multi-spectrum, ideally two, but that's uh, nothing you can expect here. One thing you could do, you know, is to have a uh, propless, a propless fit. You can do something like this. Remove that and put a put a prop, uh, no prop mod. It can it can be an idea. You'd be really tanky, and it definitely is an option actually. We could maybe test that out for T4, see if we can get some cheap fits going on. Because dual web seems like it just works so such wonders. Okay, let's go for this Lancer here. And then that's the last last sleeper cruiser for this site. And we completed it in so over 12 minutes. Not bad. Not bad completion time at all. I usually find darks to be a little bit harder to complete in terms of completion time compared to uh, the other types. Oh, we've got some red people here, flashy yellow. So those people could be out to gank us, but it's all right. Oh, you know what? We did a bit of a mistake here. We've got uh, high-grade crystals in. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Uh, sorry, guys. We've got a... Uh, uh, that was a bit of a skewed test result here. So we're tanking a little bit better than we otherwise would have, but DPS would be the same. So, And that's something that we saw that we were very good at here. But we're going to have to do more tests to make sure that the tank is all right. But also another option here, as I mentioned before, it could be, it could be interesting to see a multi-spectrum here and then have like a propless fit. Because I'm anyway having to get really close to them to use the webs. But then again, maybe it could be a 
problem if I'm not able to get close to anything and then I'm stuck there and I can't get close and use the dual webs that can be a bit annoying if I don't have any proper tool I'll be completely useless well not completely useless but I'll be a lot more useless if I I'm not able to get close to them so could be an idea I just want to get some really nice reliable t4 Cerberus fits because I think the Cerberus has a lot of potential for being a very good t4 and even t5 uh, dark fit t6 I don't like the idea of using it because you're gonna have to have so much bling I'd prefer Gila but for t4 and t5 I think that it can be a very good price to performance ship just need to really find the ideal fit so that's stuff for now hope you guys enjoyed hope you learned something new if you did please leave a like and subscribe I'll catch you guys later